in my opinion, CPT is an efficient and a very exciting soil investigation method. And hopefully at the end of this presentation, you feel the same way. But let me, before I talk about CPT, let me give you a few disclaimers. Uh, first of all, I'm a Dutchman. Uh, I was born and raised in the Netherlands, left Holland in uh, 1984, and have uh, lived at various places uh, around the world, but now I've been since 1999, been living here in the United States. But I'm still a Dutchman. And that also means that I'm a true and convinced and uh, self-proclaimed conehead. What I mean by that is that I truly feel that CPT is by far the most ideal soil investigation method. Much better than drilling, much better than vein testing and a whole bunch of other tests. Does it mean that CPT is perfect? Absolutely not. And that's why I will try in this presentation not to be biased, to give you the pros and the cons, to give you a true picture of what CPT is all about. The other thing that I would like to do is to show you a few slides that another conehead here in the United States, Sir Paul Main, who's a professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology, uh, or Georgia Tech, uh, he gave this presentation, as you can see, in 2014 to the Deep Foundation Institute, and he showed three slides. This was the first one. He went back to the situation in the early uh, 20th century, 1902, and what you see on the left-hand side are things that were used in day-to-day -day life. Communication was done by the telegraph. You went to the office in a horse and buggy. Uh, you had a sewing machine. And on the right-hand side, you see some office equipment, the abacus and the split spoon. Because believe it or not, the SPT, the, the split spoon soil penetration test, was already around in 1902. If we then move forward about 50 years, and we come to the 1950s, on the left-hand side, again, you see that things at home have changed quite a bit. There's now a telephone. There's a TV. There's a washing machine, albeit somewhat primitive uh, by today's standards. And there is a car that uh, drives on, uh, on gasoline. The right hand side, you see that the abacus has been changed to a slide rule, but the split spoon is still there. And if you then go to his last slide, and it says 2014, because that was when he made his presentation, but I could have easily made it 2020. You see again, it's at home, things have, have modernized. The smartphone, the electric automobile, the LED TV. And on the right-hand side, yes, we're using now no longer the slide rule, but tablets. But that split spoon is still there. As if nothing has changed, we're still using that split spoon in the SPT as the soil investigation method of choice, especially here in North America. The question though is that with a split spoon, as you drive it into the ground, you basically get one number the end value, the famous end value that, that people are using to do the design of their foundations. And the question that then arises is, is one number, that, that single end value, enough to characterize the soil? Because what you see here on the left and on the right are a whole bunch of parameters of, of clay and sand. And I could have made it list much longer, but there was only so much space on this, this one slide. So does it make sense to use a soil investigation method that gives you just one single parameter, the end value, to try to characterize the soil that you're dealing with. And that's where cone penetration testing or CPT comes into play. Because instead of having just one value, we are driving a cone into the ground. And at that, with that cone, we measure the total dip resistance or QT. We measure the sleeve friction and we measure pore pressure. So now, instead of just having one parameter, we measure three parameters and possibly even more as you are putting other modules behind the, the cone, as we will uh, see in, in a few minutes. Instead of one value, you have three values. So a much better way of trying to characterize the, the soil. And that is why I think cone penetration testing is this exciting soil investigation method. So what are we going to talk about today? As I already said, the title of this first webinar is What is CPT? So we will address that, that question in more detail. Then I will be talking a little bit about why would you perform CPT? I also promise you that I would not be biased. So if I talk about why you perform CPT, you also should address why you cannot or should not, or at least in the opinion of numerous people, cannot do CPT. 
And then finally, we want to talk about some other options that you have once you have CPT equipment, what you can do with it and what other, what other modules are available to, to enhance your CPT program. But let's go back to what is CPT. Before we do that, I show you here in a little chart on uh, the top, uh, the bottom uh, right hand side. CPT is something that a lot of people are not really all that excited about or uh, feel uh, somewhat reluctant to, to start using. So what we have to do is we have to overcome resistance. We do that by, among others, webinars like this to, to build desire to hopefully convince you to, to start using CPT to build a desire and to help you to overcome the resistance that your clients may have. We also need to give you arguments, how you can address the people that are the true naysayers that when they come up with arguments why it cannot be used. So that's why we are talking about why CPT. And then hopefully you will get excited, you will start using CPT, and then the cycle just continues and with a little bit of luck and a little bit of effort and working together, we can make CPT even more widely used around the world. So let's continue with CPT. CPT is just one of many, many field in situ geotechnical test methods. And what we mean by that is that we don't take a sample to the lab, but we just take a sample in the soil, in the ground, what you see here, uh, I think it's about 30 or so different uh, soil investigation methods. And the ones that we are going to focus on today are CPT. And you see there different abbreviations used for, for CPT. You have the CPT as the cone penetration test. Some people still refer to it as CPTU when you use a piezo cone or when you measure the pore pressure. But really these days, most of the time, we're using a cone that measures pore pressure anyhow. And then we have the resistivity piezo cone, where you put a module behind the cone to measure the soil resistivity, and the same thing with, with the seismic cone. That's the topic of this webinar. And what we do with CPT is something that is very basic. We basically push a steel probe that has a tip, and that tip has a 60 degree angle, and we push it in the ground. And we do that at a speed of 0.8 inches per second or two centimeters per second. Now you may wonder why you have all these specific details and why that is all defined in ASTM D5778 or in an equivalent ISO code. The reason for that is that this method has been standardized so much, we push at the same speed with a cone that is very, very well defined. The diameter is specified, the, the length of the cone is, is specified, the, the pushing speed is specified, so that we get the, the results that we have, we can then correlate with the behavior of the soil, as we will see in a few minutes. We're not boring anything. That means that we don't get any samples, that is true, but we also don't have any cuttings, and, and we have no spoil with, uh, when you use CPT. And the advantage of that is that when you are in soil conditions where you have potentially some uh, items in, in the soil that you don't want to bring to the surface, uh, that would require you to do all kinds of special things with that, that soil that comes to the surface, you don't need to worry about it with, with CPT. And you get a continuous reading of your stress, your friction, your pore pressure. It is not like with SPT that you get a result every five feet or every one and a half meter or uh, other intervals, but you get a continuous reading of your uh, stress, your friction, and your pressure. What are these readings? What you see here is again the cone on the left hand side, the uh, schematic of, of that, and you see then uh, the, the three graphs, your tip resistance, your sleeve friction, and your pore pressure. And that is what appears on your screen as you perform CPT. And with this information, we can then go and characterize the soil. Because what the, the function of CPT is, is that by plotting either your cone resistance against a friction ratio, which is nothing more than the uh, sleeve friction divided by the tip resistance, or as you can see on the right-hand side, the, the cone resistance against the pore pressure, we can characterize the soil by in this graph. And when you are in, say, area number three, 
It does not mean that we're saying that the soil that the cone at that time is going to is a clay, but that it behaves like a clay. And that's why you see on the, the chart at the bottom, the soil behavior type. Because we're not interested that we have a certain soil or that the soil is a certain color or that uh, the soil has a certain grain size. What we want to know, what we are interested in is how it behaves. And that is what you do with CPT. You characterize the soil in classifications that re uh, represent the behavior of the soil so that you can then design your foundation. So why do you perform CPT? Well, this is really the crux of the whole presentation. And let me rerun this thing again. As you go to a job site and you come with your cone and you start pushing it in the ground, as you're pushing it to the ground, you will get a chart like this. Your cone resistance, your sleeve friction, and your pore pressure, and you have your soil classification automatically generated on the right-hand side as well. And that means that, very simplistically put, you get to the job site, you push the cone, you issue a report, because after about 25 minutes, when you are to your, your depth of say 60 feet or about 20 meters or so, you start pulling your cone back out of the ground. At that time, you have your soil report that if you have access to, to the internet, you can already email to your client. Compare that to what you do when you do SPT, or when you do boring, you get your samples, it takes you a while, you then take the samples to the lab, and maybe two or three weeks after you have gone to the job site to do your, your test, you find the results. With CPT, you have it within minutes, and therefore, it's a very exciting and interesting method. But I told you, I would not be biased, so why would you not do CPT? Well, the most, uh, the most common answer to that is that it's a very new method. Quite a few people, and maybe you on this call as well, are not familiar with CPT, and you think it is a new method. In reality, it was first developed in the 1930s. At that time, we were talking about just a mechanical cone, no moving parts that only measured the tip resistance. It was pushed in the ground manually with a uh, pushing uh, rig that was uh, manually operated, but then in 1959, we started getting the first hydraulic pushing rigs. And in 1965, we got a further adjustment that you had the first moving part, a sliding shaft to measure the sleeve friction. And that was then the so-called friction jacket cone or the Begemann cone. Those things were still called mechanical uh, cone penetration test because we did not have the electrical cone that only came up in the 19, early 1970s. But when you think about it, in the early 1970s, it was also when the, the first color TVs, those huge analog color TVs, these huge boxes uh, were be produced and then sold in the market. It's that long ago that the electrical CPT has been, been around. So it's not really a new method. What's still the case in quite a few areas is that it's not specified. And therefore, people find in the specifications that they have to use a different uh, soil investigation method. But things are changing, simply because many uh, building codes these days require the uh, wave speed of the th top 30 meters. And that is only going to be uh, developed with, uh, with CPT uh, most, most easily. So things are changing there. Another argument that you hear quite often is that the soil is too hard. Well, when you look at this chart on, on the right-hand side, what I put there is the, on the horizontal axis, the SPT values. And say that you have an SPT of, say, 60 blows, uh, an N value. And people say, well, it's too hard to push a cone into the ground. But if we use a 15 centimeter square cone, a somewhat larger cone with a, uh, a diameter of uh, 44 millimeters, so uh, 1.75 inches, and we push it in the ground with a push force of about 10 tons, we can get it there. And what you see is that even with a, an end value of about 100, it only takes about 15 to, to 20 tons or so to get that cone into the ground. Most full-fledged CPT trucks have that pushing capability. So when you can push a split spoon in the ground, you can push a cone in the ground. Well, not necessarily all the time. 
Because one of the things, and I'll come back to the, the samples, if you have boulders or debris in, in the ground, when you have pieces of, of concrete or refrigerators, if you test a, a landfill, uh, then obviously you cannot push your cone through that. People sometimes try it, and invariably the cone will break off, and they'll try it again, and it will simply not go through there. But in, in general, if you can push the... Um, the splits put into the ground, you can push a CPT cone in the ground. Another disadvantage, according to some, is that you don't get any samples. Now, personally, I don't care that much about it because I really don't want to know what the color of, of the soil is or what the, what the grain size is necessarily. I want to know how the soil behaves because the foundation that you're going to try to put in the, that location is also interested in how the soil behaves. The foundation will not have a different bearing capacity whether the soil is red or brown. Uh, the soil has certain parameters, and that is what we're trying to uh, develop and uh, derive with, with CPT. But some people want to know what the, uh, how the soil looks like, and that's why well, you can take samples. Well, you can still push a, sam push a sampler in the ground and get a sample even with, with CPT. Not at the same time. You have to push the sampler uh, just adjacent where you did your CPT uh, boring, but then you can take samples just at the, the layers of interest because you already have your soil report, so you know uh, what layers of interest you, are, you have. We already talked about the boulders and debris. And then finally, the argument is, well, it's, it's too expensive to do this. And to some extent, that is true. If you have a full-fledged crawler or a full-fledged truck, that takes uh, quite a bit of investment. And if you go to a much simpler solution, much cheaper solution, a lightweight uh, crawler, you may not have enough capacity to, to do that. So how do you transition into CPT? Well, one alternative is, of course, one extreme is to buy a state-of-the-art unit. And what you see here is basically a, a lap on wheels in which you can push the cone as well. For many of you, that is probably initially a step too far. So simply what you can do is use what you have and buy mainly what you would need anyhow and get started. And what I mean by that is that if you already have a drill rig, then what you can do is you can buy an electrical CPT system that you see here in the picture on the, the bottom right with the, the, the cone and some rods and some cables and a data acquisition box which you would need anyhow, even if you upgrade later on to a more advanced CPT unit, and then use your, your drill rig to start doing CPT. Ecocomp has a very interesting product, <coughs> the drill and CPT, as you see here. That's a, a 10 or 20 ton automatic CPT system. You place it in your, your drill rig and you operate it with your, your drill rig, with a regular drill rig or a sonic drill rig, and you convert it into temporarily to a CPT unit. And the nice thing about this whole thing is that it will provide you with a continuous CPT profile or the data in between the sampling. And if you want to go back to your drilling, you just remove it and you start doing your, your regular drilling operation again. And then if you want to put it back on, you can start operating it as a CPT unit. Another exciting option is to combine it with a sonic drill rig and start using the CPT as a sonic CPT mode. And what I mean by that is that initially you just push the cone in the ground, as I told you before, that you have two centimeters per second or 0.8 inches per second. You move it in the ground and you take all your measurements. But then when you hit a very difficult layer, a layer that has uh, gets you the, the standard refusal, but you still want to go deeper, then you move it into sonic mode, where you then use the cone as a, a sonic uh, push device to get through this hard layer. And then once you're going through this hard layer, you go back to regular CPT. And that will allow you to get with your, your CPT unit to difficult layers as well. Now, once you have all the CPT data, the question, of course, is how do you use it? And for that, I want to just uh, promote a, a publication by another conehead here in the United States, uh, Peter Robertson. Uh, Peter put a uh, book together, The Guide to Cone Penetration Testing. Uh, and in that, uh, the book, he describes how you convert the CPT data uh, to all kinds of parameters. He gives the equations for that. And he also talks about different CPT uh, applications that we will cover in, in the future. 
The book is freely available. You can find it on, uh, on the website. And if you have a hard time finding it, uh, send me an email uh, after this, this webinar, and I'm more than happy to send you a copy of this, uh, this book. I told you also that there are other options. You can put behind your CPT cone, you can put a seismic adapter. And with that seismic adapter, you can start doing seismic CPT, where you measure the shear wave velocity uh, of, the, uh, of the soil. And you see an indication there, an example here on the, the right-hand side. You can also put an electrical conductivity module behind the cone. And with that module, you can measure various parameters uh, with which you can determine the, the moisture content or the electrical conductivity of the, of the soil. For those of you that still want to see how the soil looks, we have a video cone where, again, behind the cone, we put a little video camera with a light source. And as you go down into the soil, you can see the color and the grain size and the structure and all that, that good stuff. Personally, I don't think that it really adds anything, but some people like to see it, and we have it as an, uh, available and as an option. And finally, what you can do as well with, with CPT is, is instead of putting a cone at the, uh, the end of the, the CPT rods, is put a vein there, push that vein in the ground, and rotate it, and then start using a lot of your CPT equipment that you have as vein testing equipment. Those are just a few of uh, the additional options that you have once you have CPT to do uh, other types of, of testing or more elaborate testing so that you get even more soil parameters other than the, the three that CPT provides you with, with your tip resistance, your sleeve friction, and your pore pressure. So because of all that, because of the flexibility, because of the, the various options that you have, because of the values that, that you get, not just one parameter, but three, because of the speed with which you can execute your, uh, your CPT uh, and how quickly you get a uh, report. To me, that is why CPT is an efficient and exciting soil investigation method. And that's why I'm very excited to, to work within the IFOCOMP organization to promote CPT and to, to give you an indication what CPT can all do. Now, I realize full well that this is a very high-level introductory presentation, and we went through it fairly quickly, but we told you that this would be about half an hour uh, webinar. So in future webinars, we go uh, in more detail looking at uh, various aspects of, of CPT so that you get a better feel for what CPT is all about. And with that, I will see whether there are any questions. Um, and maybe, Troy, I don't know whether you followed, whether there are any questions uh, that people would like to, uh, to ask. Okay, I see one question that, that has come in uh, that has to do with uh, how deep can you go with, with CPT. Um, with seismic CPT, or sorry, with sonic CPT, you can really go as, as deep as you, you want. Because as you push the cone in the ground, if you hit refusal, uh, that you hit a layer that is, is too deep or too hard to, to push the cone through, you can drill through that with your sonic uh, mode, go and then continue with your CPT again. Other methods that have been used is that you do your CPT until you hit your refusal and then drill that part out. And then once you have done that, uh, continue with CPT again. And we easily have seen CPTs going down to 60 meters or about 200 feet. Um, regularly speaking, though, with a 20-foot, 20 20-ton uh, cone uh, truck, you probably go down to a depth of about uh, 25 meters, 30 meters, something like that. It depends a little bit on uh, what the, uh, the soil uh, profile is all about. Another question about uh, sonic CPT. Uh, again, this is something that, that ICOCOMP offers uh, unlike uh, any other uh, organization because there are quite a few organizations that do provide CPT. Uh, the advantage of, of sonic CPT is, like I said, you are using the, the cone and the cone strain in, in two modes. In the standard mode, where you push the cone into to the ground with a, uh, a speed of uh, 0.8 inches per second, and you get all your measurements. And then when it is too, uh, too hard, when the soil, soil or the, the rock layer is, is such that you cannot get through there, uh, in that case, what you can, uh, can do is start vibrating the, the cone 
and in the sonic mode and vibrate your cone through that hard layer until you think you can start going going back again to your uh, your standard CPT uh, mode. And that is uh, an option that you combine with any sonic uh, CPT uh, unit. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us and I look forward to, uh, to talking to you in the future more about CPT. Thank you very much.